I go, I went to Jamaica a few weeks ago. This was an agricultural country, three million people. I asked around, do you grow any wheat? No. Do you grow any rice? No. Do you grow any sugar cane anymore? No. Do you grow any corn? Very little. Do you have any um, uh, animals? Yes, some. Uh, uh, so where do you get your food and your feed for the animals? From the United States. This is Jamaica. The whole Caribbean was populated only for the purposes of agriculture. Indians were brought over there by the, uh, the, the colon, European co uh, colonizers and the blacks were brought there as slaves to grow cotton and sugar cane and other products. Now they're not growing their own food. Everybody has golf courses in Florida. They only grow grass, waste money. Nobody grows food. What's happened? I mean, you see, beyond the book, I'm now uh, invited to be speaker all over the world. I've gone to Australia, I've gone to New Zealand, I've gone repeatedly to India. Uh, I recently went to Jamaica, I just uh, went to Florida. Uh, sometimes I'm invited and sometimes I, I, from my own observations, what's happened? Why, why are we just growing grass, uh, day and night watering? for golf courses and there's no food and they say there's shortage of food. And then they want to grow GMOs to, to uh, make ethanol to drive cars and increase in meat production. And a as you become affluent, you eat more meat as though it's a good thing. It's a bad thing for humans to be eating that much meat. So wherever you look, whichever way you go, this is corporate corruption aided and abetted by governments, by big governments. That's what the, my whole book is about. And I, in the last chapter, I talk about something has to happen. It has to change. We have to take this to the education system. Since the governments are not listening, obviously the corporations are not listening, what we need to do is take it in our own hands, take it to our schools. Our education system all over the world is defective. It became defective since the beginning of the Industrial Revolution in 1867. First the steam engine, they burned the forests in Europe, they burned the forests in India, wherever the railways went, and then came the coal fossil fuel, and then came the oil fossil fuel, and now the nuclear fossil fuel, and all being wasted and creating this climate change primarily because of the way we are producing food, the way we are uh, transporting food, the way we are um, making petroleum-based fertilizers, pesticides, and um, uh, refrigeration, pasteurization. Where, wherever you go, there is the carbon footprint. This climate change is not coming from somewhere by, um, by itself. We are doing something. And it, we've been doing something drastic in the last 50 to 60 years uh, or maybe 100 or 150 years uh, and so industrial revolution education ha has become our curse we should be teaching children in schoolyards in schools where they have playing fields in the playing playing fields where nobody plays they're lying idle they go cut grass and put pesticides on them Instead, they should be using those fields as living laboratories for schools, for school kids from age 5 to 18. And all, all subjects should be taught around growing food in the hands of children. Automatically, those children will learn the soil, the microbes, the microflora, the pH of the soil and, and how the uh, the the um, uh, crops are grown why, why animals are necessary uh, on the fields themselves uh, the earthworms uh, little children and then later on they will say oh maybe we need some greenhouses maybe we'll put some solar panels so technology will grow with it and nobody will ever starve nobody will ever go hungry nutrition will improve health will improve we America will be saved from bankruptcy. Canada will be saved from bankruptcy due to uh, 
excess healthcare costs uh, that we are uh, inputting. There's no way we can sustain this style of living, burning and uh, toxic, intoxifying food, and, and then on the one hand, we're, we're burning the candle from both hands. First, we create disease by eating bad food, injecting vaccines which are bad uh, uh, and harmful, and then you come out to treat them. Obesity, uh, diabetes, and so, and then they uh, start talking about, oh, maybe there's some genetic defect. But the genetic defect was always there. What is triggering the genetic defect to become so massive? So these are some of the uh, things that I've uh, tried to illustrate in in the book and beyond the book that uh, I go with it. Uh, and, and people are listening. Governments are not. So uh, that's uh, my story on the book. That's why I call it corrupt to the core, because everything, everybody's become corrupt. Even if it makes money, how much money does one need? It's just, sure. it's just greed and power of denying to other people. You know, food was used during the Cold War years or, or even before. They were saying, we're going to deny people food uh, or we'll sell food. But the tables turned on them and countries like uh, uh, India and Brazil and China and, 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 um, um, uh, and others started to grow their own food. They became food exporters. Now they're surprised, oh, what happened? These countries with, with a billion people each, they're actually exporting food and good food. And their food is still better than ours because they haven't got the money yet to uh, wreck it the way we have. Although the push is now to go there. Everybody's descending uh, uh, in India, uh, the IMF and World Bank and corporations, and, uh, and they all want to, Walmarts and Monsantos, and everybody's going there. Why? Why don't they stay home? Let people be. They'll be healthy. Maybe they'll give us organic food. Maybe we should be growing our own organic food. Our own children should be doing that. And then those children will not be called child labor because it's part of their curriculum. So these are some of my views um, on and beyond the book that uh, uh, that uh, uh, that I, I, I uh, I'm talking about, and uh, I'm really grateful that uh, you're um, talking to me and uh, hopefully send the message out. I actually hope that you'll carry the book for us because in the United States it's very hard to uh, sell the book. Yes, well. Well, thank you. Uh, thank you for your explanation. So, the uh, I'm not sure that I agree with some of the points. Uh, at least I have a different viewpoint on uh, what's likely to happen in the United States economy uh, as evidenced. And I think we're seeing the beginnings of it in the Middle East where we've had, at the time of this recording, uh, three countries uh, in rebellion. And what most people don't realize is the central cause of those rebellions is really the cause of the cost of food. So it's going up and there's actually going to be a lot more of this. We're going to see many countries just uh, go up in arms and, and go into revolt and revolution over this. And, and uh, you know, they, they don't, they've collapsed their ability to produce their own food in many cases and the, and the costs have gone dramatically. And there's a number of reasons of this, but I don't think that uh, there's, you know, I'm just being prag pragmatic. It's my belief that it's not going to change in the U.S., that it's inevitable we're looking at a collapse at some point in the future. So I, I, it doesn't dismiss the importance of your recommendations because ultimately the solution is going to be to engage in a process where you're making your own food. So to get back to the roots, to get back to the soil, to to really understand how to produce it, and, and even beyond plants, you know, to have your own chickens and produce eggs, uh, you know, would be a really powerful source of protein for most people that is relatively easy to produce and you, you can really, really help the local community. So I think these are, these are strategies that we need to move towards, and, you know, I think that uh, alerting people to this is going to be really important. Uh, and of course, we have our health. I mean, if we're eating the right foods and avoiding the toxins that you discuss and describe, that you so vigorously tried to prevent from from uh, being integrated into the environment, 
you know, then we can stay healthy. You know, at this point, you weren't successful and many others weren't successful because these are very powerful forces we're, we're dealing with. And uh, But at least we know, thanks to these tools like the Internet and, and books and such, you know, we can share the information, people become educated, and they can avoid these foods that are causing problems, like GMO, which are pervasive, absolutely super pervasive, and increasing numbers growing throughout the world. So I don't know, that's my view. I just think it's uh, it's sad but true that uh, we're looking at some type of eventual collapse in the United States, I mean, and maybe even not the too distant future. You know, I hope it doesn't have to happen. Some sense should prevail. I hope the <laughs> collapse it doesn't have to happen because the United States is a great country. It's a leader. People look up to the United States. So instead of uh, uh, transporting bad ideas due to which the U.S. has suffered, they should reflect within themselves and that will be a great idea that other people would follow. People all over the world are looking up to the United States, the Middle East, or India, everyone. That's what U.S. was all about. Not the modern Tea Party, but the, uh, the initial Tea Party. That was the United States. Uh, you know, the democratic principles of the country. And that, that is, you know, it's... Well, I agree. That, that was that clearly the case, and, you know, we have a history of it, but like many great historical uh, empires, like the Roman Empire and such, you know, they... They only exist for so long, and then eventually these processes in, in the grow where there's just massive corruption, which is really the, the central core of your book. You know, this corruption just sort of infects the infrastructure of the entire system. So the bulk of the people are still in alignment with these principles and would love to follow it, but they can't. They're impaired, they're prevented, they're barricaded, they're restricted because there's powerful corporate and political influences, which is really more of a fascist state where, the, where the, the government is combined with the corporations, have really created barriers to change things. I mean, just look at the GMO situation with Monsanto. They have been able to orchestrate their cronies in virtually every corner of the federal government so that it is impossible to regulate GMOs logist logically or scientifically or in, in any prudent fashion because they have appointees that's just from Claire Thomas who's, was a former chief counsel who's now the uh, justice on the Supreme Court to Tom Vilasek who's the chairman of the United States Department of Agriculture to one of the heads of the FDA and about a dozen other key, key positions so they you know this is just one example how they just have been able to control this whole process so I, I hate to be pessimistic but on, this, on the other hand, it's, it's really important to be level-headed and have a clear view of the challenges that we really do face. And uh, you know, I, I, it may be maybe something similar that we see in Libya and Egypt and such, and you know, where, where people just get ticked off enough, they're they're going to have a revolt. Uh, I don't know, but there's something that's going to need to change because you know, the the, the, the the corruption has been so massively, progressively escalating that it's gotten to the point where things 